Jupiter makes its closest approach to Earth, putting on an incredible show for you to go out to observe and image. Let's take a look at what you can go out to see in the night sky for December of 2024. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. Happy Holidays and welcome to the night sky. We begin this month with two major meteor showers, the first of which is the Geminids. To see them, go outside on the evening of December 13th around 9 p.m. and look towards the east. There you will come across the constellation Gemini, and right below it, the bright red planet Mars. It's from this region of space that these meteors will appear to streak from. On the best years under dark skies, you can hope to see possibly 100 meteors per hour, but sadly this year a nearly full moon will block out all but the brightest meteors. My friends in the southern hemisphere will have to stay up a little bit later to get their best views of this shower early in the morning of December 14th. Later in the month, on the night of December 22nd into the 23rd, look for the Ursids meteor shower near the constellation Ursa Minor, the Little Dipper. This is a less impressive shower with a peak rate of 5 to 10 meteors per hour, but the moon will thankfully be out of the way for most of the night for this shower. As frustrating as it can be for the moon to get in the way of meteor showers, we've got to go easy on it this month because I think right now it's my kid's personal favorite object to see through the telescope, so we'll cut it a break this time. Let's start with the phases for you to go out to observe the moon, beginning with a new moon on December 1st. First quarter moon December 8th, full moon December 15th, last quarter moon December 22nd, and another new moon on December 30th. The moon also makes close passes to several objects this month, beginning with Venus December 4th, Saturn December 8th, Neptune December 9th, M45 on the 13th, Jupiter on the 14th, the star Beta Tauri, December 15th, Mars on the 18th, and the star Spica on the 24th. Our main event this month is the return of my favorite planet to view through a telescope, Jupiter. It's going to be at opposition with Earth on December 7th, meaning that in the orbit of the Sun, Earth, and Jupiter, we're pretty much at our closest point to it around that date leading to some incredible opportunities to go out to observe and image it now and also for the next several weeks and months. Jupiter begins the month rising in the east just about the same time the sun sets. Just two hours after sunset, Jupiter will be at a great height in the east and is easily the brightest object in that part of the sky. After you found it with the naked eye, Take a pair of binoculars to it and see how many of the Galilean moons are visible. Depending on their path that night, you may see all four of them, or perhaps just a few. If you own a telescope, train your eyepiece on it, and you'll see one of my personal favorite views year after year. The cloud belts of Jupiter will stand out in nearly any telescope and you might even be able to see the great red spot depending on the night that you're viewing it. On most evenings, I'm viewing Jupiter around 150 to 250 times magnification, depending on how steady the sky conditions are. Be sure to let me know if you're able to get out to see Jupiter, and share any pictures you're able to take of it with me over on Instagram at Late Night Astronomy. Jupiter's not the only show in town, however, this month, as Saturn continues to put on a great show with views in the southwest for the first part of the night. Neptune follows close behind it, Uranus is just ahead of Jupiter, and Venus continues to dominate the western sky as the brightest object right after sunset. For those of you willing to stay up just a little bit later, you can catch some incredible views of Mars around 11 p.m. as it rises high in the east. We'll have a lot more to say about this planet next month as it makes its closest approach to Earth. Before we get to our deep sky objects, I wanted to take some time to share my thoughts on two eyepieces that were sent to me by the good people at Sivbani. They asked me to try out these eyepieces and share my thoughts with you all. I've been using the SV230 Super Zoom 
and the SV215 planetary click stop zoom eyepieces for the past several weeks. The SV230 provides zoom focal lengths ranging from 20 millimeters to eight millimeters with a comfortable level of eye relief throughout the focal length range. Out of the two eyepieces though, I was most impressed by the performance of the SV215 planetary eyepiece. Testing it on Saturn, the views were incredibly sharp with a high level of contrast. The beauty of a high quality zoom eyepiece like this one is that it allows you to click in the best magnification on any given night, depending upon how steady your sky is, because that's really the most limiting factor on most evenings. Again, I appreciate the good people at Sivvani for sending me these eyepieces, and I'll be sure to leave a link to both of them in the description below if you have an interest in checking them out. Now let's get back to deep sky objects by going outside around 9 p.m. this month and facing towards the east. Keep looking up until you come across the Pleiades. The Seven Sisters are another great naked eye and binocular target that will reveal more and more stars as you move your way up to views through a telescope at low and medium magnifications. In long exposure photography, the Blue Nebula appears with the Seven Sisters. Next, let's make our way over to the constellation Auriga. Here you will find amongst several objects the starfish and pinwheel clusters. This region of space is a great view through binoculars and low magnification eyepieces in your telescope. Move over from Auriga until you come across the bright stars Betelgeuse and Rigel that make up part of the constellation Orion. Between Betelgeuse and Rigel, you will see the three bright stars that are Orion's belt. Moving down from Orion's belt will take you to one of the most impressive targets in the night sky, the Orion Nebula. Start around 50 times magnification to reveal the faint details of the grayish teal clouds that your eyes are seeing. This nebula is one of the closest stellar nurseries to our planet and will show cloudy details through any size telescope. Even with a pair of binoculars, you can make out a gray cloud and under very dark skies, a small blurry smudge might show up to the naked eye. This long exposure image reveals the details of this beautiful region of space. Those are just some of the most incredible things that you can get out to see in the night sky for the month of December. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know what you're hoping to get out to see in the comments section below. From all of us here at Late Night Astronomy, I'd like to wish each and every one of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday Season. And as always, clear skies.